Good morning. In this video, I'm going to focus on what I do with birds that are new to me. I've made a similar video about the greenback twin spot, but here I'm going to focus on the purple grenadiers, who are also new to me, and they're very different, and um, there's been some interesting developments. So when birds arrive from Europe out of quarantine, I don't know that much about them. I would like to know everything there is to know about them, but I don't. So one of the things that I need to do is get to know the birds. And the other thing I need to do is get them comfortable and happy and make sure they're well. So that's my focus for the first five days or so. So unlike the twin spots, very unlike, uh, this pair is set up in separate sides of the same flight cage with a removable partition and it's semi-transparent. And the first priority, I think, for me is just to ascertain if the birds are feeling okay and healthy. And you can see they're pretty rough. They haven't had a bath in a long time, typically, um, so the feather condition is not great. But they're active. They're, um, she's singing. They're eating well. They're pooping well. They're taking water well. Um, I also notice their personality. She's bold and confident and um, fairly tame, and he's very standoffish and a little bit more skittish. So that gives me an idea of how I should approach them to help them be more comfortable. And then probably the next priority for me is to figure out if they can share space, because I'd like to give them as much space as possible. And because this is the normal time of year for species to be in breeding condition, I'm going to try to figure out whether they are, and some species have different indicators. But, for example, one of the indicators is, uh, you'll see with the female here, that she has a brood patch developing. And I'll freeze the frame so you can see. It's that line uh, along her chest and belly. The line is there because she's missing feathers. That's where the exposed skin is, where she would you know, in, uh, press up against the eggs. And the male is not. I can tell the male is young. He's not fully colored up, but it can take a couple years with this species. So there's a difference in their mindset there that could be a potential problem. So the next thing that um, I'm paying attention to is pretty common with the, these birds, given the time of year and their newly found privacy, security, um, variety of foods, animal protein, live foods, um, etc. that if they're not in breeding condition already, they're probably going to go into breeding condition. So now I have to be careful about the triggers like live food, for example. Is that going to cause a problem? So the way I do that is I introduce things that I know are triggers and see how the birds react to them when they're separated. Okay, so this video is on day three. And I've worked up to moving the food dishes very close to the partition so they can see each other um, clearly on either side. And this is a little dish of tiny live mealworms, and that is a huge trigger. Um, you can see the female is very bold and confident. It takes a while for the male to come down. But they're able to eat in proximity with each other, and they're not flying into a rage. Even when she's done eating and she's kind of putting some pressure on him, he's, he's not reacting to it, and she's not you know, going crazy, um, flying against the partition. So that's a good sign. And for the next couple of days, I'm just going to investigate some of the other triggers, like uh, half-ripe green grasses, uh, nesting material. Um, what else? You know, cucumber, other special treats, you know, things that just might cause problems. And if everything goes well, then I will give them supervised playtime uh, without any of the triggers and just see if the proximity and the visual uh, and the energy of being with each other is a problem. So that will be where I'm going to head next, um, starting right around day five. So this is in the morning. I've just given them fresh water. There's no special breakfast treats. And I'm going to open the partition about I don't know, eight inches or so. So this is their first chance to uh, see each other. Everybody be nice. Male is on the left. Okay. 
That's a perfect greeting. This is very classic wax bill like. You know, you would recognize it from other species. Triangular head display, which is hard to describe. I've tried to in other videos. You can see the male is more agitated, the female's pretty chill. She's kind of just assessing. So I'm really pleased with how things went, um, but I am not going to leave them alone together. So I have to go to work. So I'm going to separate them again for the rest of the day and revisit um, in the afternoon or evening, I guess I should say. You can see it's dark again already. And uh, you can also tell I don't go far. And this is a good example where things start to go a little bit awry. Now it pays here to know a little bit about birds. The female is going to leave her perch and land exactly where the male is. That's done on purpose. She made him move. So you can see she's, she's sort of being obnoxious, I guess I'm going to say. She could go anywhere. So now it's a couple of days later and I've worked up to removing the partition entirely. And I'm still keeping a close watch on them, but they're moving around the space nicely. Like you notice they're not, the male isn't fixated on her. She's exploring, he's exploring. There's no ritualized kind of patterning in their flight um, path. So they're starting to relax a little bit more. And that's encouraging. So you can see in this clip the they just look much more relaxed with each other. You know, the female isn't quite so defensive, the male isn't quite so fixated. They're kind of coming together and moving apart more freely. So that feels like a better vibe to me. So then I decide to start adding in the triggers again to see if anything's going to cause a problem. Okay, so the first thing I decided to add in was some greenery and the reason is because the male is starting to futz with foliage. When that happens with all of my birds, that means they are starting to arrange the environment to either display or to start working on a nest site. So let me see if that's going to be a problem if he actually can get some leaves to either display or carry around because that can be pretty triggering for the female. And that went great. Now keep in mind, I'm still, this is still supervised playtime. So when I'm working, the partition goes back in. So there, none of this is ever happening if I'm not around. So then I thought, well, let me try some edible greens, half ripe seed. And uh, I'm only explaining this because sometimes what makes a hard to breed species hard to breed is the pairing process. Um, if a species is hard to breed, there's usually a sort of a crux, like in rock climbing. And for these guys, it's getting them to pair up uh, without trying to kill each other. Or one of the one of the challenges. So we'll see. We'll watch. That was the female again that initiated that, just in case you're thinking it's only the males that do that. Okay. So then I decided just to focus on food sources for a little while, a few days, and uh, because she's kind of tame, I, I don't really try to tame the birds, but I don't mind if they're comfortable enough to come down and eat. So these are frozen um, fly larvae, 
and they're actually kind of dusted with uh, Nectin K, which is a tonic um, powder, lots of amino acids. So what I do is um, I let her eat some, I let him eat some, and then I let them sit for a while separated, and then I put them together. So getting them used to the idea of having that rich food in their system and just seeing if they can you know, deal with that. And then I would leave the food dish in there with a cucumber or sprouted seed, but not with live food or animal protein. And then it was egg food. And then I worked up to these frozen um, larvae and then up to the live mealworms. So this is the first time there are live mealworms. And um, you can see what happens. I'm ready for it. So although it's important to kind of let them try to work it out, as you can see, I intervene pretty quickly. Um, what's interesting is they did come to an agreement based on this altercation that whoever got to the food first got to eat in peace, and then the other bird will wait, and then they'll take turns. But they, they aren't into sharing at the moment. And I've actually more or less reduced the live food to zero uh, for reasons to become clear very soon. So uh, another couple of days go by and they're really starting to act like a pair now. I think this is on day 13. Um, they make a special noise. Uh, is it, when, when people say that birds are all a Twitter about something, it, that's exactly what it describes. So when she's up in a corner and futzing with the leaves, she's all twittery and whatnot, and he does the same thing. And so I decided to try some nesting material, which is just burlap uh, strings. And this all seems to be looking pretty good, but this is why it's supervised. Okay. Now, this is another clip from be right before that happened, and I missed something. So you'll notice in the previous clip that the male sort of is looking over the edge of the grass. And look how fixated he is on the right side of the cage. And I wasn't paying attention to that. This partition here is clear, and he can see over to the other cage. Well, he just noticed who lives next door, and that is a no bueno uh, neighbor to see, and that's a violet-eared waxbill male. They're closely related, and they do not want to share space. So he was essentially fence fighting with this guy, and then th sort of redirected that aggression onto the female. So down comes the clear. Uh, protector, draft protector, and up goes a opaque version, and that should solve that. You can hear the um, alarm calls in this clip. So stupid move on my part, but pretty easily rectified. So now a couple days later, um, I have burlap strewn around, and I'm able to open the door confidently and um, leave it down while I'm doing all the bird chores and there's no issues. So I'm also starting to notice because there's stuff they can futz with where they're spending their time. And the female likes the upper left corner where the dark green leaves are and the male likes the other corner. And that's giving me an idea what to do next. And that is I'm gonna add a couple of nest sites. So in this corner, I had a half open nest box with the top off so I could peer down inside of it. And my violet ears nested in exactly that same setup. So did the black cheeks for one of their clutches. 
So that's a pretty common configuration that they might be interested in. And then I always use the read ball that the twin spot, everybody nests in the read ball. So even though I did this, almost always the birds choose the big open read balls that you will have seen before. Put that in the other corner. And again, this is all supervised. Um, you can sort of see that they're investigating both of those locations. And I learn a lot about what they're looking for when I watch how they interact. For example, the female likes the top of the ball and the male likes to go inside of it. She's looking for a more private spot. All right, we're going to try this. Nobody be a jerk, okay? So that is not live food, um, but it is animal protein in the form of a frozen larva and egg food. I'm not going very far. This clip now is on day 15, I think, and I'm leaving the uh, cage open all the time, even unsupervised now. Um, they're able to take food, there's nesting material, there's nest sites. Um, they're acting very compatible. They're kind of working back and forth, trying to entice each other into a nest site. And in fact, um, the first day, no, the second day I left them um, alone all day together, I got done with work and the male had more or less completed a nest already. So I slipped my camera in to spy on them while I did dishes and um, was delighted to find out that the female was participating in the nest building. That was a great sign. So that was day 17 and now um, I'm finishing this video on day 20 and they are sitting on three eggs. So a lot can change in 20 days. Um, hopefully that's an interesting progression. Thanks for watching.